uh, in the early stages, they were more interested in getting a group of, of children, as they saw it, together who would, who would work well together and interact well together. Whether Roger, and you'd have to ask him this, whether he planned to have people from all sorts of different backgrounds, I don't know, but that's the way it worked out. That was quite an advanced idea for the early 1970s, and I think that's one of the keys to its success. I think I was allowed, I was allowed to use my own uh, experience and personality in it. And I mean, I remember the notices all liked Tim when they first came out. They all said Tim was, was, was a unique creation, so I was very pleased about that although it was influenced by Hell in 2001, as you probably, you know, as, as it was obviously based on that, but we had to make it, we had to make it something that was, was unique. He had to be a living computer. The agent at the time called and said there's an audition, and I believe at the time they were looking for young people around the age of 14 and 15, and I, I, I was in my early 20s. I couldn't quite see the pixels, but they'd been looking for a long time. So um, I said yes to the audition, and I went dressed um, young. So I had a wig, which I wore with bunches, um, and I wore white ankle socks and shoes. I mean, I think probably part of the reason I got it was just the cheek of, of um, turning up at the, um, the audition dressed like that. I, yeah, I think that uh, the Doomsday Men, uh, which I think was in the second season, the blue and the green, and there was another one. Rift in time. Rift in time. No, that's right. They were good. They were. They were. Um, we all sort of grew into our characters, and understood them a lot more from the first series, and understood that actually this is quite a popular program, and we should take it a bit more seriously and get. And the, it was the first time they used outside broadcast um, for the blue and the green. We went. We we overtook a school in um, St Margaret's, Queen's School, I think it is, and it was. And they had all the scanner vans outside, and that was the first time they'd done that for certainly for kids programs. I mean, definitely for kids' programs because it would cost a fortune. So it was everything was getting a bit serious, you know. It touched on fear. Um, it touched on, on, on sort of excitement um, of the individual and of, of the class it's, uh, as well. Um, so I think the the writing there was was extremely powerful, and um, breaking out was seen not just that it could be traumatic, that it wasn't only. Um, about becoming this new set of uh, people, but it could be traumatic, and there were decisions to be made. You know, do I want to be a tomorrow person? What does it mean? Um, and I think for young people, it's it's very much about adolescence, isn't it? Really, so it's about um, is it what is it like being a child? Do I want to be an adult? What are the responsibilities that um, I, I I will have to take on as an adult? And I think that whole adolescence phase is similar to breaking out. It's not being one thing or another. Um, and that's what Roger, I think, also was trying to portray with, uh, with Breaking Out, and particularly with the blue and the green. They, sp I know they spent a lot of money, actually, um, for, for a kids' program. I mean, you'll remember it was that they have different budgets up at Thames for, for what they're going to spend on a kids' program. And to uh, do that, yeah, they, but it was very, quite big sets. I mean, they must have spent a fortune for that time. As far as the stories were concerned, I think most of the stories were actually very good. Um, by the time we got into the second series, we were more into the swing of the thing. Uh, certain points had been made, certain the characters were established, the whole idea was established. Uh, you had to spend less time explaining what was going on, perhaps. Um, arguably better written, The Blue and the Green, I think, sticks out in most people's minds as being a particularly good story. Um, but. I, I don't, th as I say, you can pick out good episodes, you can pick out bad. I don't think it's necessarily fair to say a particular series was better than any other. I think there would have been a message that um, young people picked up on that um, because it was about a colour, being a colour. Um, and it was about um, getting into fights uh, for no specific reason, not knowing why, just because something is. So I think that the blue and the green on that score would have touched on that. I mean, in fact, there have been psychological experiments doing just that in America. And it may be that that's where Roger initially got that um, storyline, where, um, for example, when you're looking at uh, discrimination within a company, um, what happened was that each member was given a color to wear um, as they entered the, the, I think it must have been over a week um, of training and then exploring what it meant to be a blue and green and how, how easily people divided simply because of alliance and allegiances. 
So um, that storyline has its base really in some um, psychotherapy uh, in terms of uh, you know, man managing um, difference. Oh, that's quite something, Robert. Really good. The rest of you, gather round and have a look at this. See the subtle use of colour and shading, giving a fluid appearance to the whole thing, making it appear to shift and change all the time. Well done, Robert. What are you going to call it? Change of weather on Rexall 4. Yes, I see. A sort of abstract title. Oh, no, it's supposed to be the change of weather on some distant planet. I'm keen on science fiction, you see. Well, it's very good, Robert. I'm sure we could hang it up in the classroom, if you wouldn't mind. No, fine. Ah, the bell. Well, that's it, then. Pack up your things and go. <laughs> Where'd you get the name Rexall 4? Oh, I just dreamt it up. Why? Nothing. Good night, Robert. Good night, Miss. You coming for the bus? No, I go home a different way. Oh, well, see you then. See ya. Don't jaunt in and out of school like that. They'll catch you at it one day. Oh, don't worry. No one will notice. Have a good day at school. No, thanks. Oh, I wish I didn't have to go. It's a complete waste of time. You have to go to school, Stephen, or you have the authorities after you. And we can't have you drawing attention to yourself. Yes, I know, I know. It's all right for some, though, isn't it? What have you been doing today? Been for a swim and a sunbathe in the Caribbean. Galleon Island. Yeah, some people do have jam on it. Well, you can still go. One of the advantages of jaunting. Distance, no object. You sound like a travel brochure. <laughs> hey, listen, there was a funny thing today. Well, there's a kid in my class called Robert. Oh, yeah? Well, he did a painting. He called it Change of Weather on Rexall 4. So? So that's just what it was. I've been to that planet, and he'd drawn it exactly as it is. Exactly. Mm, interesting. Did you talk to him about it? Oh, sure. He said he made it up. You sure it wasn't just a coincidence? Not a chance. There was too much detail, and all correct. Whether he made it up, or whether it's been there, he drew Rexall 4 exactly as it is. Exactly as it looks when the weather is changing. Well, we're always on the lookout for new tomorrow people. Keep your eye on this Robert character, will you? Yeah, sure I will. But it'd have to be pretty well developed as a TP to jaunt as far as Rexall. What's well, a good 30 light years? Besides, I'd been bound to pick him up as soon as he started to break out. Well, seeing we're in the same school. Quite right. Well, what is he if he isn't one of us? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. 
There's something else been bothering me too. We got this new teacher, well a student really, on teaching practice. I think that once or twice I may have picked up some of her unspoken thoughts. Now that is interesting. Yes, and you like her too, John. She's a smasher, just about your age. Stephen! Oh, hello, miss. Tim, I think she saw me halfway through a jaunt. Then her reaction should be interesting. Sit down, Stephen. I want a word with you. I don't know quite how to put this. You hear voices? Your voices. Look, when I was about your age, which wasn't so long ago... Yes? Well, I had an imaginary friend, and I would speak to him sometimes. Only I didn't speak to him out loud. I don't... This Tim you were talking to just now, and that other one, John, I think you call him. Well, what I'm trying to say is that I quite understand. Speak to them by all means, but not out loud. You mean you can actually hear me when I'm talking to John and Tim? Yes, I can, and so can everyone else. Look, I don't want you to get the reputation for being a nutter. I'm surprised none of the other kids had said anything. That they don't, well, laugh at you. They don't laugh because they can't hear me. You're the only person who can. Stephen, I'm trying to help you. Please don't make fun of me. I'm not. But there's something I'd like to know, though. Do you hear John and Tim as well? Yes, of course. You do the voices very well. And you wish I had half your talent for that sort of thing. You do. What? You do have my talent. We're both telepathic. Don't be ridiculous. Look, Stephen, I'm trying to help you. I don't know much about your background, but there may be something. Is there anything worrying you? Is there something you feel only your secret friends should know? The ones you've invented, John and Tim? Well, you're right about there being something that only my secret friends should know. But you're wrong about them being imaginary. All right, they're real, they exist. They're ordinary people like you and me. Well, Tim isn't a person, of course. Well, he's a computer, actually. But John's a person, but he's not ordinary. Well, he's like you and me, another telepath. Do stop trying to involve me in your fantasies. You involved yourself. You are a telepath. I'm not telling you anything you, know, you don't know. You've just got to face up to it. See, I'm talking to you without moving my lips. I can cover my mouth and pinch my nose. The sound of my voice hasn't changed one bit. Because, well, you're not hearing it through your ears, and I'm not speaking through my mouth. No ventriloquist in the world could do that. We are the same, you and I and John. We are telepathic. You can read our minds and we can read yours. It's a trick. That's all a trick. Look, I don't know how you do it, Jameson, but it's nothing but a clever trick. A clever, stupid schoolboy trick. You think just because I'm a student teacher you can make fun of me? Well, I wanted to help you. Were you monitoring all that, Tim? Yes, Stephen. She is still afraid to face the truth about herself. But I am convinced she is one of us. Shall I go after her, Tim? No. She will be all right when she calms down. Perhaps you're right. Where's John? He's swimming again. Galleon Island. Why don't you join him? Why not? I'll join back to the lab for my things. have me around to help her when it happens. Do not push her too hard, Stephen. It could be dangerous to tax her with what she is before she has fully realized it. You remember what it was like for you. We nearly lost you. Yes, in more ways than one. Yeah, well, we had to let her break out in her own time, like we did with you. Don't I know? It was horrible. Well, it may not be the best way, but at least we know it works. Oh, 
now that Carol and Kenny are no longer living on Earth, we can't afford to take any chances with any new tomorrow people. I have to make it up to her somehow. Nothing like the old-fashioned way. Tomorrow, I think I'll take a, an apple for my teacher. I thought you had to be a teacher of Tiny Tots to get one of these. I'm sorry about yesterday, Stephen, but that's all over and done with. Subject closed, OK? Yes. It's a nice apple. Tastes fresh. Where did you get it? I picked it myself. In January? In Australia. Tell me, have they ever trundled you in front of the school psychiatrist? It finds you a most interesting case. I never knew we had one. As far as I know, we don't. But I'm beginning to think it's time we got one. Well, anyway, I wouldn't tell him the things I tell you. Oh, no? What's so special about me, then? I know. Don't tell me. We're alike, you and I. That's it. The voices, Elizabeth. Remember, the voices you keep hearing. I've had just about enough of this. Stop bothering me. Stop following me around. And don't call me Elizabeth. I'm Miss Mbondo to you. Oh. Hey. Hi, Steve. What's eating her? Oh, nothing. What's up to your picture? It's changed. So it has. Still, I called it change of weather. Looks like it's taken a turn for the worse. Not a nice day for anyone living on Rexel 4. Did you know there really is a planet called Rexel 4? Really? No, what a strange coincidence. How does it change? <laughs> Don't know if it has, really. The paint's probably run a bit. Still looks quite good, though. Do you ever feel the urge to paint anything like that? Well, strange. Can't say I do. Painting's not my strong subject. <laughs> Isn't mine either. I've never done anything like that before. It's like, well, something took possession of my hands and made me paint it. You don't happen to hear voices as well, do you? Think I'm bonkers or something? No. What is 12 times 3, Tim? 63. Wrong, Tim. Oh, yes, of course. 36. It's these simple calculations, you know. Hey, Stephen. Stephen, come here a minute. Is that or is that not a view of QX5? You know, when the planet passes between its two suns on its figure of eight orbit. Sure looks like it. What are you doing the Observer? A children's art competition. The judge had remarked on the skillful way the picture had been painted, so that the patterns of light within it appeared to change from time to time. Well, isn't that just what your Robert's picture does? Yes. The artist, Gavin Watson, a keen science fiction fan, says the picture represents the surface of a planet he calls... QX5. Jorbit's two sons. Can't be chance again. But he should get the name of the planet exactly right and the galactic codification too. Not ours, remember. Just as your friend Robert does. But the chances against it are astronomical. Does it say where that kid goes to school? Uh, King's Bentley Comprehensive School in Warwickshire. That is doubly interesting. Last week there were serious disturbances at King's Bentley Comprehensive School. Fights among the pupils. The police had to be called. Mm, I wonder if that's just a coincidence. I think not. It correlates with another incident in Wales. A priest has exorcised a similar painting. He what? Exorcised. Exorcism, a ceremony to cast out devils. The hell book and candle and all that? You must be joking. We're not in the dark ages, Tim. Nevertheless, he exorcised it. Why? People thought the picture showed heaven and hell alternately. And when it showed hell, the children in the local school were uncontrollable, extremely violent, seemingly possessed by the devil. Yes, Stephen, what is it? There's half a dozen big kids nearly killing a little one in our classroom. And I can't do anything to stop them. 
Well, not without using my special powers. You don't want to do that, Stephen. You'll attract a lot of attention and cause a lot of trouble. Talking to yourself again? Good heavens! <laughs> what are you doing? Leave that boy alone! Do you hear? Leave him alone! You talking to us? John, I'm going to use my special powers. Don't do that, Stephen. The painting, John. The painting's changed again. Everything is calm. I'm surprised at all of you. Those of you who were doing that dreadful thing, and those of you who did nothing to stop it. Get back to your places. If this happens again, we'll have the headmaster in. You're afraid of the headmaster, aren't you? I wouldn't be. And you do what he says. But if you don't, he gives you the cane. And you respect him. It's not the headmaster we respect. We respect his cane. That's right, yeah. yeah. Do you think it's right to respect only the people you're afraid of? No. Um, Stephen, have you any thoughts on the matter? Well, I don't think that people who make you afraid of them deserve any respect at all. I mean, respect ought to be mutual. Good. Yeah. So we're all agreed. Now let's get down to some work in an atmosphere of mutual respect. I just don't seem to be able to get through to her. Well, I don't see why not. You have enough opportunities. Well, it's just that she's a teacher. Well, only a trainee teacher, but still a teacher. And I'm a pupil. The system makes sure there's a great gulf between us. And any sensible communication well, is almost impossible. Well, if I were a teacher, I might be glad of that gulf sometimes, the way kids behave. John, what she needs well, is to meet someone like you. Someone she doesn't automatically think is a pupil. You know, it's less than half human. Okay. It's time I met her anyway. Right, I warned you, we'll start with you, Johnson. Go to the headmaster. The baby. Yes, you, Johnson. Oh, oh. You know very well what for. I don't know what for. <laughs> I wasn't the only one. Everyone else was doing it. Are you gay or do I have to fetch the headmaster? <laughs> oh, you always pick on me. No one else. It's always me, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Settle down, the rest of you, or you'll all be making the same long walk as Johnson. She's only a student teacher. If she wasn't taking us while old Tripanel is off sick, we'd be doing something worse, like picking paper off the playground. Thank you, Robert. But I think it might be better if you refer to the regular art master as Mr. Tripanel, at least in my presence. This your famous picture? That's it. It started out dark and stormy earlier. We had a rough half hour. But it's been warm and bright ever since. And we have a quite a calm afternoon. Influences directors, that? Yes, indeed. I think we'd better get it back to the lab and examine it. Perhaps. But if we don't know what it is, might that not be a bit dangerous? It could be. Who can tell? Hello. Admiring our gathering storm picture, eh? <laughs> Hello. Yes, but it doesn't look very stormy to me. No, you're right. It doesn't. How strange. Still, you must be the John Stevens been asking me to meet. That's right. I'm Elizabeth Mbondo. Hello. So I'm here. What's this all about? Voices. Stephen's been telling you the truth, you know, about the telepathy and everything. Thought we were going to have a sensible conversation. And we are, and a calm and rational one, too, I hope. Look, John, whatever your name is, Stephen does a passably good ventriloquist act. If I was doing the end of term show, I'd have him in it. The voice he does for John is a fair imitation of yours. It's not an imitation. I'm pleased to see that you're real flesh and blood, and not a total figment of his imagination. But I'm not pleased to see that you're feeding and supporting his crackpot fantasies about having special powers. 
and being one of the new race of super beams. Fire. I looked up his record card, and there isn't much sign of his being a super beam there, I can tell you. Not to judge by his schoolwork, anyway. Well, nevertheless, that's what he is. That's what we all are. Stephen doesn't pretend to talk to me, he really does. And I talk to him, too. He brings you to school in his satchel, I suppose. We're telepaths. You want to, miss, or will be when we've helped you. I don't need help. You do, both of you. And as for you, you're corrupting young Jameson with your silly ideas. I can see that now. I'm going to inform the headmaster. No, don't do that. Nothing will stop me, I assure you. Seeing me jaunt must have kicked it off. So at least we're here to help her. Well, it's all right, Elizabeth. You'll be coming on of us. No, no, I'm not. Let me out of here. She's gone jaunted. It's just what we didn't want to happen. Well, at least she shows she's one of us. Yeah, perhaps was one of us. She's jaunted indiscriminately and out of control without knowing how she does it or where she's going. We've got to find her. Where do we start looking? On Earth? In space? She could be anywhere. We don't even know if she's alive or dead. Come up with anything yet, Tim? To jaunt any substantial distance, all the tomorrow people require a boost. That is why you wear jaunting belts. She did not have one, so the likelihood is that she did not jaunt far, certainly not into the sea or outer space. Perhaps she did not jaunt anywhere. Perhaps she only accomplished half a jaunt. You mean she's stuck in hyperspace? We haven't got much time. You know what happens to somebody in hyperspace. Without an AE suit on, they very soon start to drift apart. Of course, they are maintained and fully charged. Good. Any idea where she might be in hyperspace, Tim? The only logical place to search are at the hyperspatial coordinates which correspond to the norm spatial coordinates of the classroom from which she disappeared. I propose to jaunt you into different sectors near to those coordinates. It is pointless you both searching the same sector. Yeah, well, that's true. OK, Tim. Let's go. Check. Jack. She's in a bad way. Elizabeth. No, no, leave me alone. She's gone. Where? Almost certainly back to the spot from which she originally disappeared. The school classroom. Explain everything to you. John, the picture, look, it's stormy. Oh, never mind that now, Steve. Do you think that taxi driver believed your story about us advertising man, the moon, the milk bars? Well, it makes no difference. I don't want to believe him anyway. So this is it then? The Bat Cave. This is the lab where we operate from and, well, keep all our equipment. Well, just the two of you? Well, except for Tim. Who's he, the cat? <laughs> well, I have been taken for some things in my time, but never a cat. What's that? Who's there? That was Tim. But where is he? Oh, he's all around us. Tim's our, uh, computer. Well, artificial intelligence, really. I must say, I like that title. Hello, Elizabeth. I am glad you have joined us. Uh, hello, Tim. Where are spools and things? I don't have spools, Elizabeth. I am a biotronic computer. I consist of living fluids, and I am capable of original thought, so I don't have to be programmed. 
good. I'm glad you're not mechanical. I'm not very good with mechanical things. Pleased to meet you, Tim. Perhaps you'll be able to help me correct homework sometime. Not if it is anything like the homework Stephen brings me to do for him, but I'll try. So, two little tomorrow people, and then there were three. Five? There are others. Yes, Carol and Kenny. Well, they don't live on Earth anymore. They've gone to join the Galactic Federation. Well, actually, they've joined, joined Overmind, which is a link of telepathic beings which advises the uh, Galactic Council. Sounds a bit like giving your body for scientific research. Well, really, it's more like being a member of Parliament or representing a country at the United Nations. It's good to know that someone's looking after our interests out there. Are they gone forever, or can I expect to see them sometime? Well, I don't expect we'll be seeing much of Carol. She's fallen in love with an Adonisian counsellor. <laughs> but Kenny said he'd pop back from time to time, even though they've sent a spaceship to collect his mother to go and live with him on the Galactic Trig. <sighs> so, tell me, what else is new? What else do I have to know? <laughs> Tim. Good morning, Stephen. Oh, thanks, Tim. You are always welcome. Wake her gently, Stephen. Oh, thanks. Now pinch me and tell me which was a dream and which was real. This is real. The Tomorrow People, and you being one of us. And last night wasn't a dream? Nope. I bet I look a sight. You look great. Beautiful. What a way to talk to your teacher. Teacher, heck, what time is it? I'll be late. I'm supposed to be taking the register of your class this morning. Oh, it's about four minutes to nine. How far are we from the school? We seem to be hours in the taxi. You won't be late, neither will I. I never leave till this time. Here, put this on. That's it. What do I do? Oh, nothing. Just come and stand over here. See, it's easy, no trouble at all. No trouble, eh? Listen to that lot, sounds like a cage full of wild animals. Beats the buses in the underground any day. Oh, yes. I don't think I'm going to face the bus ride after today. Oh, tough day. Murder, sheer murder all day. It's the same in every classroom, wild. I want to be a teacher because I believe in the young. But that belief took some pounding today, I can tell you. And the picture stayed stormy all day. I kept a check on it. Well, I just had a feeling, well, if it would change to summer again, everything would be all right and everyone would calm down. That's interesting. Let's go and have a look at it. Now? Well, why not? Spend all day here. I could do without trailing back at night. So quiet now and peaceful without the kids. Hey, look at the picture. Hey, what are you doing? I'm just looking at the back. I thought there might be two pictures. We're not that stupid. Yes, yeah, so I see. The trouble is, we need to make a detailed microscopic examination of it. We can't do that here. Yeah, let's get it back to the lab. I'd like Tim to have a look at this. No, leave it where it is. Well, don't worry. You can just say you've entered it for a competition or something. Well, that doesn't matter. It's just that I'm afraid. What of? It's just a picture. Well, that's it. The one thing we do know is that it isn't just a picture. 
Well, the only way we can find out what it really is is by taking it back to the lab. Well, perhaps somebody wants us to take it back. Whatever for? Well, like the Trojan horse. Remember what happened after it was dragged inside the city gates? You've got a point there. Yeah, well, perhaps discretion is the better part of valour for the moment. We'll leave it here until we know a bit more about it. you a question, Elizabeth? Anything, Tim. Are you going to keep your job? Qualify to be a teacher, I mean? Yes, and then carry on teaching, I hope. I am glad. John doesn't have a job. Doesn't really need one, does he? I suppose not. But it does keep him out of touch with ordinary people. Well, I intend to stay very much in touch. Besides, if we're going to discover more tomorrow people, what better place to look than a school? And what better way to look than being a teacher? I am glad you are not choosing the easy option, Elizabeth. Thank you, Tim. But I wouldn't mind it being a bit easier. Hope the picture stays fine tomorrow. Good night, Tim. Good night, Elizabeth. Please, miss. I've been making these badges. Can I pass them round? For people to keep? <laughs> yes, of course. That's very generous of you, Robert. May I have one? Sure. Which colour? Uh, blue. Thank you, Robert. They're lovely. Which colour? Blue or green? Oh, I don't know. What have you got most of? No, you choose. It's important that you choose. All right, then. I'll have a green one. Which colour? Blue or green? John, Ginger's young brother Chris is outside. He wants to come into the lab. I think he's in trouble. Oh, let him in then, please, Tim. Hello, Chris. Don't see much. What on earth's happened to you? You should see Ging. She's a sight worse off than me, I can tell you. Well, what's happened? Have you two had an accident or something? A fight? No, no, beat him. I beat him fair and square, even though if he is bigger than me. You've been fighting with Ginge, whatever for? Because he's a lousy blue. Huh. Who would have thought him, my own brother? After all these years, he turns out to be a lousy, stinking blue. Are you trying to tell me that Ginge has joined the Conservative Party? Ha ha. Politics has nothing to do with him. Well, what then, football? Of course not. Him being a blue and me being a green. See the green badge I'm wearing? And Ginge wears a blue one of these? That's right. And I thought I knew him just goes to show you, doesn't it? Do you mean to say that you and Ginge have been fighting over the colour of a badge? Yeah, well, of course. You're not a blue too, are you? I still don't know what a blue or green is or what the difference is supposed to why be. Why, everything. If you're a green, you've got to find the blues and jack. I still don't see why. Because they're blues, of course. Honestly. Ginge was always on about how bright you tomorrow people are. Myself, I'm beginning to wonder. Chris, are you seriously trying to tell me that you and Ginger have fallen out over a colour? Not just a colour. Blue and green, don't you know? Explain it to me. There are these two colours, you see, and you've got to choose which you're going to be. Everyone is either a green or a blue, and you wear a badge to show which side you're on. Well, how come you and Ginger are on opposite sides, then? Because he chose to be a blue, that's why. Where's Ginge now? Uh, he's in hospital. Oh, no, Chris, you didn't. Uh, no, he, he fell off his motorbike. No, Chris, you hold the fort here. I'm going to go and visit Ginge. The old bunch of grapes fit, as he would say. But he's a blue! He's still a human being, and your brother. Chris, take off that badge. Forget all this blue and green nonsense. Seems like a mass outbreak of madness to me.
think you are. You're not a teacher, you're just a student. You've got no right to order around. Just a lousy blue anyway. Take your badge off. What are you doing? Badge in the picture, look, it's stormy. We've got to stop them. Stop them. Hey, break it up. You're not the other master here. Stop it! Stop it! Do you Sister, Andrew, tell the school secretary to phone for an ambulance. It's all right, Seth. You'll be all right. Are you going to be in trouble over what happened today? No, the headmaster says I'm not to blame. Because as a student teacher, I shouldn't have been left in charge of the class anyway. Oh, good. Coming back to the lab for supper? No, I'll join you later. I'm going round to Seth Bartlett's home, see how he is. Why, is that part of your job? Not really. But if I'm going to be a teacher, caring about the kids is all part of the job. You're going to be one of the best, Elizabeth. I'll see you later. OK. I want to see and, if possible, video record that picture as it changes. How do you think we should do that? Stake it out until it does change. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Come on, give me a hand and get the gear ready. It ought to be a boarding school the time I spend there. Where's Elizabeth, by the way? Oh, she's gone to see that kid who was hurt today. Thank you for the tea, Mrs Bartlett. I'm glad Seth isn't badly hurt. I look forward to seeing him in a couple of days. attachment in case there are any sonics. Thank you. Uh, look after Elizabeth when she gets in, please, Tim. It will be a pleasure, John. Watch it, Tim. Don't get your tubes in a tank. Seems to be sunny and bright at night. Yeah, well, let's get the equipment set up, then we can sit down and wait. That was Elizabeth. Jaunt us to her, Tim. <laughs> you all right, Elizabeth? Yes, thanks. You got here just in time. Pulling yobs. I wish we weren't so peaceful. Then I'd show them. It wasn't their fault, Stephen. I don't think they knew what they were doing. 
They were quite quiet until the picture changed. Yeah, we were watching it. We saw it change. Not the one in the classroom. That one. The best thing to do in those circumstances is just to jaunt away. Oh, I know I should have done, but it's all so new to me. At the time I didn't think of it. Oh no, Stephen, what have you done to the video corner? Found it like this. Someone must have smashed it. And the recording tape is missing. It wouldn't have been the school caretaker. He'd just have locked us stuff away. Or called the police. And what about Robert? No, not necessarily. That painting seems to control people. Perhaps it, or... Someone else is controlling Robert. Either way, I think we ought to keep an eye on Robert from now on. He's our only lead. The paintings are spreading. So is the wearing of blue and green badges. And so is the violence. Like something's taking over people's minds and robbing them of their reason. And I'm afraid it is happening all over the world. In some countries, it is far in advance of the stage we have reached. Look at this film of battles between blue and green supporters in Tokyo. Some reports say that the police themselves took sides, some with the blue and some with the green. OK, so it's a real and dangerous <coughs> menace that's rather crept up on us in all the excitement of Elizabeth joining us. That makes me feel as if it's my fault, in a way. No, of course not. Look, what I want you to do tomorrow is keep an eye on Robert. I'm going to go back to that shop where we bought the painting. Give the pair with the watch in there. I'll take your watch away, oh, no, boy. No, I, I don't it. want eight and a half carat gold watches. Go on. 75 pounds, then. Waiting my time. Go on. Oh, you're an old miser. Thank you very much. Go on. Get out. Coming in here, wasting an old man's time. Yes, I tell you, no, I'm not buying anything. I'm not selling anything, either. Yeah. I, I was interested in the painting you had. Well, I was interested in the painting you have in the window. Ah, the painting in the window. Oh, yeah. Is this the one, Sonny? Oh, no, no, it's not that one. Well, make up your mind, boy. Which one do you want? Well, it's a bit difficult to describe, really. It's uh, got a white wood frame and... Um... White, white? White wood frame? Yeah, and a sort of funny shape. Oh, the weather picture. Yes, that must be it. Oh, you don't want to bother with that, boy. It's completely worthless. It was painted by my grandson. Your grandson? Yes, the young scoundrel. He's not really my grandson, though, you know. He, uh, he was adopted, I think. Yes, even I so. Think... The, the picture, may I see it? I told you, you don't want to worry about it. It's completely worthless. Surely anything's worth money if the customer's prepared to pay for it. Pay for it. Uh, 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 <coughs> oh, yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I think I can get it out for you. It's very good, this picture. Uh, it's cleaned up. Yes, that's the one. I'll give you two pounds for oh, it. Oh, I don't know about that. It's my grandson's own fair work, you know. I couldn't get it, let it go for as little as oh, two right, pounds. All right, all right, all right. How, how much? Uh, how much? Uh, four pounds. Two pounds fifty, not a penny more. Um, uh, it's three pounds fifty. I mean, nights of work it took him. Weeks. All right, three pounds. They were done. <laughs> I'd uh, like to see your grandson. He's currently he's not here. He's away at school. sure it was wise to bring it in here. No, neither am I. But is there any other way you can give it a detailed examination? No. John, we found out something very interesting about Robert. Oh, I wonder if it's the same thing I found out. Probably. Robert lives at the shop where we saw that other picture. Yes. I went over there this afternoon. I met his grandfather. I bought the painting. The old twister made me pay three quid for it. And I'm going there after school. I've been invited. <laughs> Yes? Are we closed? It's me, Grandfather. Uh, I brought a friend from school. A friend? This oh, is yeah. Stephen, Grandfather. We're in the same class. Oh, yes. <laughs> I sold that picture of yours, my boy. Sold it? Yes. Well, I wanted to keep it. Oh, but I got you a very good price for it, you see. I got, let's see now, uh, 30 shillings for it. <laughs> you mean one pound fifty, Grandfather? Oh, I don't know anything about that new money, boy. I'll get you the cash. Ah. Uh, there we are. A 
I think it's all here. Uh, there you are, one pound and ten. Twenty, thirty, forty and two five, make fifty. <laughs> Thanks, Grandfather. All right. We're going down the cellar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Come on, Stephen. I'll give you a shilling for it. Have a sweet Wednesday. Hey, you've been busy. Yes. And boxes of blue and green badges. Do you make these down here too? I have a few friends who help. And your grandfather? He never comes down here. He's not really my grandfather, you know. No? No. He just looks after me. He always has done since I... Since? Since as... Since as long as I can remember. Money comes from somewhere every month and he looks after me. I call him grandfather. Well, it is better than an orphanage. True. Do you know who your parents were? Sort of. You're lucky, really. I bet your grandfather isn't always turning off the telly in the middle of a good horror film. No, but we don't have TV. I wouldn't have time to watch it anyway. You're a strange one and no mistake. Hey, Robert, why are you stirring up this blue and green business? But it seems to be silly to me. Well, silly and possibly dangerous. I'm not stirring it. I only give the people badges because they want them. They asked me for them, you see. There's no harm in it. Well, if you think there's no harm in splitting up people into factions of any kind, religious or just the colour of a badge, well, look at Northern Ireland. The blue and the green game is nothing like that. Just a bit of fun, that's all. Anyway, Stephen, I brought you here because I thought you and I could be friends. We might have more in common than you think. Yes, Robert, I'm sorry. <sighs> that's all right. I don't blame you for being curious. <laughs> Give me a hand with these boxes, will you? Okay. Hey, what's that? Just a storeroom. You gave me this. Oh, good. Uh, put it up over there, will you? What have you found out today? Anything? No, nothing so far. Tim's just about to give the painting a neutron examination. Ready, Tim? Yes. Stand back a bit. This may be dangerous. I'll start with a fairly gentle probe of neutrino rays. Tim. I didn't destroy it, Stephen. It destroyed itself. How? At first, I felt some resistance to the probe rays, as though the picture were trying to deflect them. Then I turned up the power. You saw what happened. You mean it had a built-in self-destruct device? That is what I surmise, yes. Somebody doesn't want us probing into what they're doing. I'm afraid I wasn't able to find out anything before the picture disintegrated but I'm interested to know that it was equipped to detect and deflect probing rays, even probes that the saps have never heard of, and destroy itself should the deflectors fail. Very sophisticated piece of apparatus. Now that you know what you're up against, Tim, do you want to have another try with this one? No, I couldn't get through. Hang it up again, Stephen, and we'll keep it under close observation. I wish you wouldn't. It's your Trojan horse idea again, Elizabeth. I don't think it can harm us. Tim, what have you found out about this Robert character? Robert doesn't exist. You mean he's a sort of mirage? That's fantastic. Nothing so exotic. I mean merely that he has no official existence. Somerset House has no record of his birth, and there is no entry about him in any official records until he turns up on the register of your school. And something else. Although he is on the register and answers in the roll call, he does not figure on the returns the school makes to County Hall. That's astonishing. It is rather unusual. 
Well, if I didn't appear on any official records, wouldn't catch me going to school. And if Robert could make things like those pictures, his knowledge is far advanced on what any school could teach him. So why does he go? He doesn't have to, and he doesn't need to. Do you think he might be one of us? Well, we've looked into that possibility already. No, he isn't. Well, if he was, we'd know. Of course, there's always the possibility he's an extraterrestrial. A what? Someone from another planet. Well, after all that's happened to me in the last couple of days, I'm not going to say that that's unbelievable. Because nothing is anymore. Elizabeth, I've been sifting through the contents of the computers used by the Department of Education and Science. A circular has been issued to all head teachers about this blue and green business. Oh yes, Tim, what does it say? The department are of the opinion that it is just a passing craze, and their advice to headmasters is to ignore it as far as possible. Pity that. Just for once they react intelligently to a problem, they happen to be wrong. We don't know they're wrong, Elizabeth. We may be the ones who are wrong. Well, let's hope we are. I'm not looking forward to school tomorrow. My, we are in a strange mood this morning. Blue badges on one side and green badges on the other. What is this? Come on, mix yourselves up. There are enough colour problems in the world already without introducing blues and greens into the spectrum of hatred. Johnson, come out here. Stay there. Todd? Right. Now, I happen to know that you two are friends most of the time. Not since you joined the Greens. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense. I want you to shake hands and show that you're still friends. Not with a Green. Johnson, no! Stop it! I didn't mean to do it, Miss Honest. The rest of your teaching career doesn't turn out like this, Elizabeth. So do I. Any news about Todd, Tim? He is all right, Elizabeth. I have checked with the medical computers. He was not badly hurt. He's been treated for shock and sent home. Poor Johnson. The police will charge him. But I don't think the kid even knew what he was doing. I wonder if you could make a court believe that. Well, he didn't. It would be unjust to punish him. He was being controlled, I saw. What did you see, Stephen? Well, as soon as it was over, Robert, well, he looked at the picture. Then it changed. It must have been some sort of telepathic command from him. And then Johnson, well, he seemed to come out of his trance. And then when he saw what he'd done, well, he was horrified. I ought to do something to help Johnson. Well, you'll get your chance. As teacher in charge, when it happens, you'll be the key witness. Well, be careful what you tell him, Elizabeth. Tell him the truth, I think you're mad. I have just had some important information. There have been incidents like yours all over the country today. Fights between groups of boys wearing blue and green badges. 
Many of them were much more serious. And in Glasgow, Leeds and Bristol, boys have been killed. Oh, no. In some schools, teachers have been drawn into the factions. In Birmingham, a teacher who wore a green badge is seriously ill after a knife attack from boys wearing blue badges. More for him for joining in. You know what this means, don't you? Yes. Robert couldn't have controlled all those incidents. Well, he'd have his hands full as ours, as far as I could tell. Right. So, we have to start looking for a lot more Roberts. Well, Robert did say there were others who helped him. I wasn't sure if he was telling the truth, but he must be. I'll keep after him. See if he leads me to them. No, don't do that, Stephen. I think he may be getting suspicious of you already. I've got an idea which might just work. Hey, John, you never took that picture away. Bad master, we're on our way. Oh, here we are, Mrs. Entwistle. Oh, the little on the heavier side. Can you manage it? Yes, that's fine. Just Thank you. Yes? Uh, remember me? If it's about the rent, I'm not paying until the pipe is fixed. It's nothing to do with the rent. I, uh, I came in here the other day and bought a painting off you, painted by your grandson. It's no refund. It's company policy. What's wrong with it, anyway? There's nothing wrong with it. I don't want any money from you at all. In fact, I might be in a position to give you some. I knew it. You're an insurance salesman. Get out! Just Go on, get not out an insurance way. salesman. I'm a journalist. A what? A journalist. Journalist. I write articles, and I thought I might write an article about your grandson and his amazing paintings. Yes, I might be able to pay for some information. Ah, sir, yes, well, mm -hmm. if you'd like to step this way, I'll see. Yes, yes, well, I will. No, you cannot see Robert. Robert is not in. Robert is out. Oh, well, um, maybe I could look down the cellar, see where the genius turns out his masterpieces. You cannot go down into the cellar unless Robert allows it. But you wouldn't know. It's just one quick look. You will go now. But I, I just want a quick look. I mean, he... Time for me to shut the shop. You must go now. Oh, all right. I'll tell him you called. Maybe he will get in touch with you. Go now. Go now. Now leave him to me. Mm, I must say he's a strange old geezer. Yeah, it's almost as if he's in, under some sort of hypnotic control, like a zombie. Doesn't seem to know what he's doing from one minute to the next. Picture. Well, there's not much left of it now. Well, where's he gone then? Jaunted off to cause havoc somewhere else. He didn't jaunt. However, he went and wherever he went, he did not jaunt. We must go after him. Yeah, we might be able to do that if we knew where he was.
so much for your superpowers. Before John disappeared, he and I had been collating the information we have got so far. In every school or college where the blue and green craze has really taken root, there is at least one picture like the one in your classroom. In every case, the picture was painted by a pupil. And each of these talented pupils has a notably hazy background. They are all looked after by a single elderly person of the same sex. None of these elderly people can remember a time when they did not look after their children nor do they seem to recall how they came to be caring for them. A trust fund based on a numbered Swiss bank account sends money every week, and none of the children are mentioned in any official records. Yes. So what do you make of it, Tim? I have no definite conclusions at this stage, only theories. Well? Stephen will tell you that I hate to commit myself to opinions without being sure of the facts. John's life is at stake, perhaps not only his. We can't just sit here and do nothing. Very well. There are amongst non-jaunting species many different and ingenious ways of traveling through space. One way could be to transmit your travelers so that they were born on and grew up on the world you wish to colonize. But that wouldn't work. Once born onto a planet, they would never be able to get off it again. True, but it's possible Can I chip that... in with a thought? Of course, Elizabeth. No, it's too stupid for words. Impossible. No, nothing's impossible. Go on, Elizabeth, tell us. Well, I was thinking about what you said, about space travelers being born on this planet. Supposing when they grew up, they could leave, could fly away into space, like birds leaving their nests, like cuckoos. That is ingenious. But ridiculous. I'm not so sure. But whatever Robert is, it doesn't really matter. He's got John, and I'm going after him. It's me, Stephen. Get out of here, Stephen. Not without you. Why don't you tell us where you were? Why don't you jaunt out of here? I can't. Something down here prevents us from using our special powers. Tim? Elizabeth? You're right, it's affected me too. Well, we'll just have to walk out of here. Is there a key to this door somewhere? Our special powers will need his strength. It's all right, I've got a stun gun. All right, Stephen. I know you're down here. No good, Stephen. Doesn't work on me. Neither will your rather unusual powers. I'm the pain. I can't do anything. Run for it, Stephen. Run for it. Jaunt. I couldn't do anything. There was nothing I could do. I was completely helpless. Thank goodness you got away. Yeah, but I had to leave John there, though. Well, why couldn't he come with you? You got away. Why couldn't he? Well, he was locked up, too. And he couldn't use any of his special powers, either. I think it's time I paid this little shop a visit with some friends of mine. <laughs> Right. Push my 
mind up, put that down. If you want any things, you nick them after we got them out, right? special to power to open this door. No, Chris, you go. Get out of here while you can. Hand up, I should. Oh. Ah. Well, wait while I reload. Oh, oh, like that. Oh. Never mind, Chris. Full marks for trying. I should have gotten. There were three of us. We didn't expect you'd succeed. But it was all going so well until those fools went berserk. I don't know what came over them. One minute everything was going fine, the next minute all hell broke loose. Sounds like the influence of the picture to me. Oh, yeah. don't blame them, Chris. They couldn't help it. They probably didn't know what they were doing. It's not the point, is it? As soon as I get to school in the morning, I'm going to take that picture down and destroy it. Don't take the picture down. I think it's been up long enough, don't you, Robert? No. Well, it can't stay up there forever, Robert. I think you'd be wise if you left it where it was for the moment. Well, if it means that much to you all... Stephen, do calm down. Pacing up and down won't solve anything. Relax a little. Yes, I'm sorry. Stephen, Tim? Elizabeth, is Robert at school with? No, he came early and stopped me from taking the picture down. I think the boys would kill me if I tried. He's got them under his power, all right, but now he's gone. She says he's gone. Left the school. But without me, he hasn't. <laughs> Uh, can I talk to you about John?
What have you done with John? If you don't let him go, I'm gonna break every bone in your body. Fool! I saw that robber kid in the street, so I went after him. Well, what'd you do to him? Oh, well, nothing. I tried to catch him when the police turned up. I'm sure they've got the number. Oh, Chris. Uh, he dropped these books. All like school books. Don't know if they're important. Oh. It's not the kind of books we use at school. Hey, look at this. It's volume four, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. What was that, Stephen? Oh, it's just a book the robber dropped in. The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon. Have you ever read it, Stephen? No, Tim, I can't say that I have. It's rather long, you know. It is six volumes. Yes, I do know. But in the light of what's been happening, it is very interesting. I should have seen the correlation before. Why? How do you mean, Tim? It seems that the Roman Empire, or what was left of it, suffered a similar senseless spate of violence in the 6th century. People split into two warring factions, which Gibbon says invaded the peace of families, divided friends and brothers. There was a lot of crime and killing, and the warring factions almost destroyed civilization. As the Dark Ages followed on shortly afterwards, perhaps they were partly responsible for doing just that. But why? There was no reason behind it. If people had an allegiance to one color, they hated people of the opposite color, hated them enough to kill them. And the colors were blue and green. <laughs> Can I move? I don't like sitting here. That's your usual place, isn't it, Howard? Yeah, I know. Can I move? Why? There's a smell. What smell? There's no smell there, Howard. There is. The smell of blow. You know, like rotten cheese. You stink yourself, Howard. You and your putrid green friend. You stinking rotten... <laughs> Right away. understand, Grandfather? Tell the police I have disappeared. Yes, Robert. I, I will tell the police you disappeared. Chris, there is trouble at the school and violence breaking out all over the place. I am worried about Elizabeth and Stephen. They may need you. All right, I'm on my way. I don't know what you are yet, but I'm going to find out. I've got to know whether you and your kind are a threat to us. You and I are going on a journey. You will find my poor lost grandson, won't you, officer? He's such a delicate boy. Yes. Oh. Oh, thank you, officer. Bye. Oh. I don't really know what I'll do without that lad. Oh. We don't really know.
Robert was here for registration, and then he bunked off. Well, a lot of the kids do. I haven't seen him since, but he's hardly been gone four hours. I wouldn't think there's any cause to get worried yet. I may have gone to the cinema or anything. That's for him being a delicate. Charging Chris with Robert's disappearance is one thing. Proving that he is responsible is quite another. No, but they'll still get him for something, though. For assault, dangerous driving, evading arrest. There's always something they can cook up. They don't have to cook up anything. By Chris's own admission, he is guilty of all those things. But only because he was trying to help us. He can't tell the police that, though. So we must help him. Yes, and John. We've got to overcome that, Robert. Well, whoever and whatever he is, and rescue John. Well, that's what Chris was trying to do when he committed those crimes. It's hard to believe that Robert or anyone else can keep John locked up in the cellar of a junk shop and that we'd be unable to rescue him. Come here, Priscilla. Come I'm coming. Ah, be with you. Ah, ah there's somebody at the door. Would you like to come in, officer, sir? I'll never know why I let you talk me into this, Christopher Harding. Because in the first place, the book tells it is search for missing kid is in his own home, right? Are you, are you gentlemen come about my Robert? Uh, yes, yes. I'm afraid we are going to have to search your shop. Uh, that is, if you don't mind. But I don't see the point of it, officer. You should be out there looking for my poor lost grandson, not coming in here and tramping all over the place and treating an old man like I. Well, we, we are uh, looking for your grandson, sir. That is why we are searching your shop. Well, you're not going to find him under there, are you, officer? Now, if, if he was here, I wouldn't have called the police, would Just I? Just a matter of routine, I do assure you, sir. A what? Routine. Routine? Sir. Oh, well, you can do your routine if you like, but don't mess up the shop, why? Uh, uh, it's down there. Shall I lead the way? Here, yeah, you'll lead the way. It's down there. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much, Harding. I'm in charge of this investigation, if you don't mind. Thank you. Very big feet they've got. They never do a routine with feet that side. Uh, uh, oh, here I go. Hide the stolen property. Uh, uh. All right, Harding, you have had your little laugh. We will now proceed in an orderly manner to the station where we will further book at you. But it was here. I swear it was here. Uh, and John, this, this, this friend of mine with the special powers, he was locked up in a dungeon. Oh, yes, yes. Look, Harding, if you think you can dodge what's coming to you by trying out the old Tweety Bird act on a trick cyclist, you have got another thing coming. But it was here! John! John! If I was to kiss you, Harding, would you turn into a beautiful princess and tell me that a wicked witch had put a spell upon you? Come on, lad. I've heard enough fairy stories for one day. Oh, 
Tem voo de mato. Tem voo de mato. No, no, that's right, because if it was murder, they'd have taken me off the case and given it to someone from Scotland Yard. Yeah. Uh, 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 get out! Uh, get out! Uh, you need uh, to get me! It's time I explain things to you. Which world are you from, by the way? Why from Earth? Chris! Are you arrested? Don't call me Houdini Harding for nothing, you know. Oh, that saves us the trouble of rescuing you. Yeah, but it doesn't finish there. They're still after me. And they're gonna try and pin the murder of that kid onto me. Unless you can help me. We shall, Chris. I will destroy their computer records, and one of the tomorrow people will erase the memory from their minds. But later, when we have cleared up this business of John and the blue and the green. Fair enough. We were planning another attack on the junk shop. Well, there's no point in that. There's nothing there anymore. What? Nothing. The police took me back there. That's what I just escaped from. Nothing but a dusty cellar full of boxes and shelves. What about the dungeon? I saw it! So did I, but there's nothing there now. You might say that I'm from this world, but not of it, if you see what I mean. Actually, no, I don't. Well, I shall try to explain. You must forgive me for being hazy. I have nothing to guide me but the ancient knowledge. The instincts long buried deep inside me and only now emerging. And carry on. I was born on Earth. Who are your parents? I don't know. I never knew them. I'm sorry, go on. It is not the way of our species to raise their own young. But we fly freely through space without need of spaceships, much as a bird flies through the air. Our eggs are laid on many different planets, and provisions are made for their incubation and hatching. Well, like cuckoos? Yes. The analogy had struck me when I began to realize what I am. You were hatched from an egg? No. No, but I don't understand. What you, just... you call eggs are made to look like the most dominant life form on the host planet. You mean in human form? Yes. But how many of you are there? Thousands. I see. Well, you know who we are. Is there any way in which we can help you? No. Indeed, you must try to stop us. Stop you? But I don't understand. You won't you... stop us because after the hatching comes the swarming. Swarming? We swarm off into space and leave the Earth in peace. What's left of it? What do you mean? Before the swarming, we have to charge ourselves with energy. What's so? that? A very special kind of energy. The energy that is radiated by human beings only in the act of violence. You mean you have to get human beings to commit acts of violence to provide the energy you need? I'm afraid so. So that's the reason for the paintings. And all the blue and green business. Yes. My mother returned to Earth to lay her eggs because she was born here. Just her. Her alone in the ancient city of Constantinople in the last years of the Roman Empire. To get the energy she needed, my mother split the people of the city into two factions. The blue and the green. I know, I read about it in Gibbons. There were weeks and weeks of rioting. Thousands of people were killed, and shortly after, the Roman Empire collapsed. Yes, and that was just for the swarming of my mother. This time, there are thousands of us waiting to hatch all over the world. You're right, of course. We'll have to stop you swarming, all of you. Even if it means killing us. Because if we fail to swarm at the proper time, we'll die. Well, what's the alternative? If you do swarm, thousands of people will die on Earth in the riots and fighting. 
My course is clear, I'm afraid. I must not let anything stop us swarming. We wouldn't, couldn't do that. If you let me go, we'd try to help. You wouldn't stop the swarming? No. But we would stop the rioting on Earth. Try and find some other way to give you the energy you need. I kept you prisoner because I thought your friends with their superpowers would try to rescue you and release a lot of violent energy. But that didn't happen. Nor would it. But tomorrow people have no violent energy. Only the saps have that. So I gather. All right, I'll let you go. Tim, don't you think it's about time we asked for help from the Galactic Tree? George, help! Hey, how'd you manage to escape? I didn't, they let me go. Why, well, after going to all that I haven't got time for explanations. What's the world situation on riots right now, Tim? Not good would be an understatement. <laughs> Does the Galactic Federation have any record of the Denegeli, Tim? That's what Robert says they call themselves. No, nothing is known. But from what you have told us, John, the preparation for the swarming must have already begun in many parts of the world. The time is almost ready. I must finish the painting. Without it, the humans will not write and we cannot swarm. The trouble is, if we stop the swarming, thousands of the Denegeli will die. And if we don't, thousands, perhaps millions of human beings will die. People are going to die, whatever we do. Hey, look at Chris. In the middle of all this, he's fallen asleep. I suppose having a nightmare in his sleep is preferable to living awake in one. Rems! What? Rems, that's it. Have an eye movement. Well, Chris may be asleep, but look at him. Whatever he's dreaming about, he's certainly living through it. It's an idea. What are you two on about? You'll see in a minute. Let's wake him up, Stephen. But he needs to sleep. He must be exhausted. Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. I must have dozed off. That's all right. What were you dreaming about just now? Dreaming? I wasn't dreaming. Oh, come off it, Chris. Everybody dreams. Think hard. It's important. I was dreaming about that Robert kid and what I'd do to him when I caught him. Do you often dream about violence? Well, sometimes. I get it now. So all we've got to do is to get the whole world to fall asleep at the right moment and dream of fighting. If I come back next week, can I try for the jackpot? Yeah, I suppose you're right. It was a bit of a crazy idea. What are you lot on about? Law and order have broken down. Our call, first made by me in the House of Commons, that we assert and enforce the British conception of law and the maintenance of public order. Stones. That's what we need. Oh, yes, running up and down every street in the world, blazing away with stun guns. That should fill up a few hours until tea time. No, giant stun guns out in space. It's an idea. Is it feasible, Tim? The stun gun would certainly produce the right kind of dream-inducing sleep. It ought to be possible to build giant ones and take them out into space. But what about the time factor? Well, has anyone got any better ideas? The longer we wait, the more we shorten our chances. There's not much I can do to help here, is there? No, I'm afraid not, Chris. Not unless you've discovered you can join. All right. So I'll love you and leave you if you don't mind. If the whole world is going to break out in one big fight, I want to go where I can be of some use. Yeah, good idea. Well, good luck. Thanks a lot, Chris. Call me if you want me. Will do. Okay, you've each got your list. I'll go and get the things and I'll see you up on the watchdog satellite.
Well done, Stephen. Tell me, was that theft, or does the end justify the means? We haven't got time for philosophical arguments now. You can take it back later if you like. Tim, any idea how long we've got? It is not easy to say, John. Things are getting steadily worse all the time. Chris, so we meet again. Off to deliver the ransom note, then, were you? Ransom notes? Don't be so stupid. Look, haven't you got better things That's to do? Him, than... Sergeant. Go on. The painting is finished. Now we must prepare to hatch. Then fly out to join the other groups in the swarming. Right, there, yeah, it's finished. Looks pretty makeshift to me. Will it really send everyone on Earth to sleep? Well, it's our only hope. Let's give it a try. Right into the Skylab, everyone. The hatching. This isn't Chicago, you know. Do we have a test firing? No time. Tim? First target selected and programmed in. How's the power, Stephen? Maximum. Right, here goes. Firing now. It worked, John. It worked. I've divided the Earth into target squares. Fire as fast as you can. Well, let's just hope we're in time. Up to power again, Stephen. Yes.
You did it, kids. You did it. The whole world is asleep. Look! Look! There go Robert and the Denny Geely. Let's hope they got enough power. I don't know how you did it, but the Earth is safe and we've got all the violent energy we need. Thank you. I'm glad we could help. Just don't come back, that's all. We won't. We have all space to roam in. Well, that's that. I don't think I've ever known it so quiet. When will the people wake up? Oh, wouldn't be long now. When they do, they're going to be a lot of puzzled people. Yeah, I'll say. And some particularly puzzled policemen. I've raised their minds of any memory of Chris. <laughs> Here, who are you? What do you think you're playing at, lad? Go on, get off out of it. Go on, I'll bet. 